Hello, uh, today we're going to experiment with a different form of graphite, powdered graphite. Um, an interesting thing about this type of graphite is that its conductive properties allow it to be used as a pressure sensor in carbon microphones. Um, that's pretty wild. So, you know, a carbon microphone converts sound to an electrical audio signal. So let's say we make some noise with our drawings. How about that? So the first thing we're going to do is to prepare our surfaces, get our materials ready to go. With this drawing, um, I want you to again tape down your drawing paper on all four sides. Uh, you don't need to coat it with gesso, but you will be working with some wet media along with your dry graphite. So to prepare your surface, do tape it down on all four sides to begin with. The other thing that I need that I don't have readily available is uh, powdered graphite. I do have a container of this in my studio, which I'm not able to get to right now. This is my home studio. So I'm going to see how I can make my own powdered graphite. I do happen to have this graphite stick. I have a really coarse piece of sandpaper. And I'm just going to rub on that and let the remains fall into this cup I have here. This actually works really well. Hey, maybe I don't need to buy graphite powder anymore. I can just do this. And then when we get to doing the demos, I can show you some pretty cool stuff that you can also do with powdered graphite. And what I have here is that powdered graphite that I kind of shaved off with my um, sand, rough sandpaper and my graphite stick. And the cool thing about powdered graphite is that you can just like dip it into the powder and draw with it or paint with it just like you would almost an oil paint. But you get this kind of like, I don't know, sfumato look to it, like smoke or something. Sfumato is from the Italian sfumare, which means to tone down or to evap evaporate like smoke. So in painting or drawing, a fine shading that produces soft, imperceptible transitions between colors and tones. It's, it's used most often in connection with the work of Leonardo da Vinci and his followers who made really subtle gradations without lines or borders from light to dark areas. And the technique was used for highly illusionistic rendering of facial features or for more atmospheric effects, like in the background areas. And it can be a lot of fun to play around with. So I've about, I've, I'm, I'm a little tired of drawing the cup over and over again. So, hey, I'm going to revert to something that's abstract. So that is just the powder graphite, you know, on its own. You can see that a little bit more clearly as I'm painting with it. I can imagine this being like, I don't know, something really beautiful. You see it kind of puff up even as I'm making marks with it. Really nice, soft quality, which I really enjoy. So the other thing you can do too is like, um, I can take, you know, one of my paintbrushes that I was using with the acrylic and you know, put either like a matte medium or even, you know, just something wet down on the paper here. So here I'll just do like, I don't know, a stripe or something like that. So I can put it down and then I can take this powdered graphite and actually just like put it across that wet area and it will stick to it and create some really interesting marks. So if I lift that up, it's only going to be in that striped area where I painted. But, you know, if I painted like the whole thing, it might be really cool. I actually had a friend in graduate school who would uh, do this with large paintings where um, he wanted this really beautiful, velvety, rich black surface. 
So what you could do is essentially, you know, paint the entire surface. You might, I might suggest an oil paint so it doesn't dry too quickly. Um, and then take this powder graphite, which you can get in larger containers, and, you know, just sort of dump it across that surface. And what we'll do, it will do is to create kind of a, a velvet quality to it. I guess I can lift this up a little bit so you can see how some areas will fall away and others not. See, I've, you've got the line of that um, acrylic that I put there. It's actually a lot of fun to play with. So I can imagine there's like an endless amount of things that you could do with this um, powdered graphite. So I, you know, challenge you to, hey, see what else you can do with it. This is, you know, drawing with a paintbrush, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I could like do some other kinds of marks and then, you know, again, throw this in there and see what else can happen. Or I could try it with, you know, like a dip some water in there. See that? I'm dripping some water. And again, you know, I could lift the paper or move it around a little bit to see what else that graphite will do and create some really interesting marks. The artist Roland Flexner actually blows a mixture of Indian ink and soapy water through a tube onto a sheet of paper. So, you know, you could certainly do that with graphite as well. could create some really interesting effects, as you can see with his work. And you can use almost like a child's bubble, you know, thing to blow it and then have it pop it onto the paper and you'll get the effect of the pop in a little bit different way. Um, so the other thing I'm going to try is maybe just like throw some of this over here and then I have my spray bottle that, you know, it just has water but I could have like solvent or even like a bit of matte medium in there and see what it does. You can see it's kind of creating an uh, explosion effect. Uh, Kai Gu Cheng was, is a contemporary artist that is from a region that's known for manufacturing fireworks. So the artist was born and raised in an area situated across from the Straits from Taiwan, which is a nation that had been engaged in a war with Kai's native uh, mainland China. So the ongoing conflict clearly left an impression on the artist with his decision to utilize gunpowder as a drawing medium. It's very interesting uh, work, so check him out. Very cool. So this is the area up here where I was spraying with the sprayer and then I put some acrylic underneath and move things around. And so you can see how that might dry. Um, in this case, you may need something more like a fixative um, to help you settle it into the paper um, and keep it on there. So that had some spray water on there and then I can powder this on to make some interesting effects. Or you can combine any, any of these processes for certain, you know. So here you see me, you know, trying out a lot of fun and different graphite, powdered graphite effects. Um, there's so much that you can do. I just really urge you to, you know, push it the material as well as you can, you know, fill up that large space and, um, you know, see what it can do for you because there's always discovery in such interesting processes.
So I hope you'll spend a good bit of time exploring these amazing properties of graphite. Um, you know, what I demonstrate here is an introduction. So now that you know more, be creative and show me lots of effects. Um, and did you know also that graphite is an electrical conductor? Um, so that's pretty interesting. You know, who knew that your drawings could really light things up? Haha. -ha. So anyhow, thank you for joining me for this fun exploration of powdered graphite. And I'll see you next time.